what is it going to take to prevent that serious complication that would cause an untimely demise? And, and the, last, the last third of life being miserable with chronic pains and dysfunction. Well, um, before they added the vitamin C just to the drinking water of these mice, they, um, these mice who had this mutated WRN mutant gene, they were fat, they were diabetic, were rapidly developing heart disease, and dying prematurely of cancer. Does this sound familiar? We're going to go over something that we've discussed previously that, that, that um, expands on this as well. Uh, but correcting this relative insufficiency of vitamin C. Why do I call it relative insufficiency? Because they, due to their genetic condition, required more of this life-saving nutrient in order to offset their genetic condition. You see, so each one of us has different genetic concerns. Somebody who doesn't apparently have any problems with health, that they come from a family where everybody lives to be 120, that nobody has high cholesterol, nobody has high blood pressure, nobody has high blood sugars, weight is, is optimal, then they probably don't need too much additional vitamin C. But if you come from a family where there's a lot of health complications, then it's based on this new scientific information, it's prudent to incorporate simple nutritional strategies like we're seeing here to help, to help minimize that risk, to help stop and possibly reverse the ravages of these biochemical changes going on in the body. So, uh, after... After drinking the water that has been laced with vitamin C, these mice have improved fat burning. Hmm. They are now actually losing weight much more easily than, than they were before they had access to this nutrient. They had decreased tissue inflammation. We're going to look at inflammation a little bit later as we look at arthritis and so forth. So here's, here's an example of a single nutrient helping with this process and then leading to less oxidative stress. This is a chemical stress on the body. Every time that we breathe, we're putting our bodies under oxidative stress. Every time that we go out and exercise, we're placing our body under oxidative stress. Are there some risks associated with all healthy behaviors? Absolutely. But see, we were created in such a way to account for that. We were provided with uh, healthy foods available in nature to be able to compensate for things that naturally occur as part of normal living such as breathing and exercising. I could come up with a whole list of reference of why you should never exercise because all these horrible biological reactions that occur in your body when you exercise. Did you know that you're far more likely to die of a heart attack when you're exercising compared to not exercising? Is that a good reason not to exercise? No, that's misapplication of information. If you exercise, you're far less likely in a 24-hour day, in a seven-day week, to die of heart disease. In fact, 50% less likely. So we have to keep looking at the big picture. So after treatment, these mutant mice were as healthy and lived as long as mice who did not have that genetic defect. Is that good news? Doesn't that give you some hope? Doesn't that say to you, hey, if I can just pull to put a little bit more energy into my health, if I could just pull together multiple strategies, starting with the most natural of all. And we're going to be looking tonight at the, the concept of what are the most obvious things that I should be doing? 